Nittany Lions winning the toss electing to receive Wolverines kicking off Haley and Walker back deep for Penn State. to the 25 yard line as Grant Haley takes the touchback. Christian Hackenberg has thrown four touchdown passes this year against six interceptions. But this is just a 19 year old a true sophomore that has already had some pretty big defining moments late in ball games. Good ones. Now, how about the defining moment last year against Michigan four overtimes. They were down late by a couple of possessions and he made big throws to get him back in the game and they're looking for him to have a big night tonight but he's got to have some help. First and 10 from the 25 Bill Belton the starting tailback. He sets to the right of Hackenberg. Belton tries to cut back. And he's brought down that's going to be a face mask penalty at the 22 yard line. Jake Ryan the first guy there. Ironically this Michigan team the least penalized team in the country. Personal foul face mask defense number 47 15 yard penalty automatic first down. And no question about it left hand on the face mask actually he got him with the left hand and the right hand. Little <laughs> excitement mm -hmm. early on they're pretty pumped up and he got uh, got his hands up there where they don't belong. First and 10 out at the 40 yard line. Hackenberg gets rid of it quickly and a nice catch and tackle immediately at the 42 yard line on Deshaun Hamilton, who leads the Big Ten in receiving yards. You know, Jonesy, we've talked about help. For Hackenberg, that's the guy. I mean, Hamilton is a guy that can provide a lot of help. An effective guy down the field. He's been the focal point of the offense. Expect Michigan to pay a lot of attention to him tonight. Second and nine. Belton on the handoff, gashes the front. Got a nice block downfield and Bill Belton inside the 30 down to the 28 yard line. First and 10 Nittany Lions. Well, you know, we've talked about the rushing attack not being very effective. They were a number 115 coming into tonight. Only about 100 yards a game. But that was a passing situation. That little inside handoff caught Michigan off guard. That uh, defensive front, that front seven, supposed to be the strength of that it, Michigan yeah, defense. Yeah, it's pretty good. They were just thinking passing situation. 31-yard game. Hackenberg squeezes it in that tight window and finds Jesse James, but there's a flag down on the far side of the field at the 23-yard line. Let's wait and see. But you got an example of the strength. Of that Hackenberg arm. Wasn't a lot of room in there. <laughs> no. And he had to squeeze that one in there. Illegal a man downfield, number 72 offense, five yard penalty, repeat first down. They're going to move it back to the 32. First and 15. All right, thanks a lot, guys. The pass by Hackenberg of Penn State downfield is incomplete, intended for Deshaun Hamilton. And welcome, everyone, to the big house. 109,000 plus Michigan, a program. Under heavy criticism right now, 0-2, they've lost three consecutive games. Penn State sanctions lifted. 
will they be bold bound this season that's one of the questions that beg the rest of the way they come in four and one and this just the third ever night game at the big house the previous two against Notre Dame the good news for the Wolverines and Brady Hoke is that they are undefeated under the lights two and oh second and 15 this is the opening drive of the ball game for the Nittany Lions after taking the opening kickoff Belton inside the 20 to the 19 yard line he comes up a couple yards short of the first down a gain of 13. Yeah, this is that opening possession for Penn State and and the effective thing for them has really been Bolden running on second down in obvious passing situations and he busted off a 31 yarder to get them down here and on that second and long they went to him so a little bit more of a commitment to try to run the ball by Penn State so far. Young offensive line with just one returning starter Zach Zwiniak. The big strong powerful runner got stoned but bounces back. Brought down short of the first down it looks like or he's right there. It's going to be close Raymond Taylor with the tackle but great effort here. Rob. Yeah watch the ping pong though. Boom 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 just bounces right off. Good balance and barely gets it or yeah he actually picked up the first down. Great second effort by Swinnett. Now Jonesy down on the field before the game we were talking about the size of the players. <laughs> Jesse James the tight end number 18 six foot seven. He's a matchup problem. He's made for the red zone. We'll see where they line them up and if they go to him here but a whistle down on the field. We're waiting for official word on what the whistle it is about. The previous play was under further review. The ruling on the field was the runner gained a first down. They're going to challenge the spot it looks like to see if he actually got the first down. So the spot is at the 17. Where's the ball? And it looks like he touched down with the ball just short of that line. That looks like just shy of the 17. And that's why they're looking at it to make sure that spot is correct and he got the benefit of a little bit of a momentum yeah forward movement there. Yeah, if you see right there you got his knee wasn't down he kind of jumped but when he jumped that ball still touched down just shy of the yellow line watch watch the right arm watch him jump and where the ball lands. He's got a little bracing and he's wow. just shy of that yellow line. Well the ruling on the field was that it was enough for a first down so there must be indisputable video evidence to overturn the ruling on the field looks like they've come to a quick judgment here. After further review the ruling on the field stands to first down. Yeah, now that means that they did not see enough to overturn that ruling they weren't going to substitute their judgment for the judgment on the field. So the ruling stands as opposed to saying yep yep we agree with it. They just have no opinion right. Penn State looking pretty sharp here on their opening drive of the ball game trying to bounce back after losing to Northwestern a couple of weeks ago. They've had a bye week to make some fine tune adjustments. Eckenberg completes it. Belton out of the backfield and another first down or close to it. Picked up just right around 10 yards. They've not been great inside the 20. You know you want to be 70 percent or better. That's what most teams strive for is that 40 percent is not good at all. Now the interesting thing so far is that Penn State has stayed with the run when you expect in the past they've continued to run which Franklin said they got away from the last couple of weeks when they played. Melton's done a nice job so far. They run it into the boundary and they string it out Michigan's defense sitting on that one Jake Ryan the team's new middle linebacker moved to middle linebacker this year made a nice stop on the play. You know we've talked about Jesse James 18 the tight end big guy being really effective in the red zone he's he's a guy that you can really use to pass the ball blocking is is a little bit of the issue you see that they really don't get the edge there his man takes him inside but don't be surprised if Penn State comes right back to him and uses him to slip him out 
into the end zone. Hackenberg is split out as a receiver here. Wildcat. Belton in the Wildcat formation. Throws it. Incomplete. He had a man in the end zone, Kyle Carter, but he overthrew him by just a little bit. And it'll be third and goal coming up for Penn State. So a little trickery that time by John Donovan, the offensive coordinator. Can I weigh in for just a second? Please do. When Hackenberg's my quarterback, <laughs> yeah. if anybody's going to throw the ball down here, I want him to throw it. Okay. I mean, that's how you get above 40% in the red zone. Mm -hmm. I don't want a backup guy, a running back, throwing it. I want Hackenberg throwing it if I'm a Penn State fan. Well, he's back under center here and now into the shotgun. Ninth play of this game opening drive. Third and goal. Timeout. Got a timeout Penn down State. to the field. Their called by the, in the lines. Timeout. And we're going to stay right here. James Franklin, the first year head coach. Taking over after leaving Vanderbilt a season ago. Mark Jones along with Rod Gilmore. Jessica Mendoza down in the field. She'll be joining us shortly. What do you make of what Penn State has done so far on this opening <laughs> drive? And in the big picture, a pretty good start for a program at 4-1. and one. Well, they, they don't have the pressure on them that Michigan has. I mean, with all the turmoil going on around here about Brady Hook, they've just come in and played and worked on their, their own issues. And their own issue was running the football. They got away from that. And we've seen a lot of that on this drive. So that they're in a good spot, but now's the time for Hackenberg. I mean, you got a third down down here, a chance to get up in this ball game. He is 99% of their offense. Now's you, the time to go back to it. You didn't like that Wildcat. I was not a fan of that at all. All right, we got the QB at QB. And the shotgun, three receivers out to the top of your screen. Hackenberg with time. And sacked back at the 18. Great effort by Gideon. Ben Gideon. First sack of the year for him. Yeah. He has pretty good protection. Has to let it go. Can't get rid of it. Gideon finds him when he tries to slide out. But that's a ball that has to come out a little faster down there. You don't have a lot of time because there's not a lot of room down there. Now Sam Ficken going to attempt this field goal from 35 yards out. Ficken 10 to 12 on the season. Had a game winning 36 yarder this year earlier against UCF. And he knocks this one through to give the Nittany Lions a three to nothing lead. But a first and 10. Wolverines come in at two and four overall. 0 and two in conference play. Gardner hands it off. On the reverse, that's Norfleet, one of their big playmakers, picks up about three yards on the play. And let's talk about Devin Gardner, the quarterback. He was benched a couple of games ago against Minnesota, came back and played pretty well last week against Rutgers. Rod. Well, and they're circling the wagons around Gardner now, too. I mean, they're saying he's the guy. And he had a great week last week, even though they lost. He played well. But you can hear the coaches and players saying he's our leader now. And talk about the program around Hope. The program is around Gardner right now. Second down and seven. Gardner given time and completes the pass across the 30 to number 88, Jake Butt, who picks up four. And there's a look at his numbers on the season. Yeah, it's been about the turnovers that, that have been a problem. You know, it was benched after the Utah game. And um, Shane Morris started the, the Minnesota game. There he is. And all the controversy arose when he suffered a concussion and nobody saw it. And, Denied it and he was out for a while and came back in and now Gardner is back as the starter and played well just uh, just last week. Well, Doug Nussmeyer the offensive coordinator for the Wolverines telling us he thought that Gardner had great command last week. Throws it and it's caught at the 46. Wow. Darbo going up high. And coming down and able to hang on to pick up 14 on the play. Yeah, not a great throw. He had to get it up over the underneath coverage. He does that, but it's a bit high. But what about the effort here by Darbo to get up and come up with that? It gives them a first down and 10 at their own 46. Little play action. They set up the screen. Good blocking out in front of the tailback, Smith. And Davion Smith with a nice run. And let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick fil A. Well, you just saw one of them, uh, Davion, Davion Smith, because he's in for Derek Green, who's 
broken a, have broken a collarbone. He's out. He's going to be running up against one of Penn State's really good players. Mike Hull, linebacker, continuing that tradition of linebacker U. But Smith and others will have to step up and help out the rushing attack for Michigan without Green. Uh, Smith thought to be more of a thumper as opposed to Green. They give it to him here and looks like he picks up enough for the first down. Picked up three on the play and it's first down Michigan at about the 43 yard line. Smith Justice Hayes should get some touches touches today along with Drake Johnson. First down and 10 Michigan with the football at the Penn State 42 yard line. Devin Gardner back to pass. Touchdown Michigan. Devin Funches through the arms of Ryan Kaiser. Unbelievable. He just took it away from Kaiser. Kaiser waited like it was a punt and thought he had plenty of time for it and tried to catch it low. Funches goes up and grabs it at the highest point, as one should. And at six foot five, <laughs> nice play. That's his fourth touchdown catch of the season, the 15th of his career, and a great answer to our touchdown pass from Gardner to Funches. And they lead it seven to three. Haley and Walker back deep. And Haley takes a knee. It'll come out to the 25 yard line. And folks, Monday night, it's a divisional matchup as Colin Kaepernick and the 49ers look to extend their three game winning streak against the Rams. Monday Night Football 815 on ESPN and also on Watch ESPN and uh, Rod you're a Bay Area guy what do you make of the way that Kaepernick and the 49ers are playing so far this year. Uh, I, I think he's coming around and I think he's a little bit more motivated after he got fined yeah. 10,000 bucks by the by the league for wearing his uh, his beats his headphones. I mean yeah. come on he's he's, you know? he's good at canceling out the noise. Yeah exactly huh? exactly. <laughs> yeah he's he's going to be fine he's rolling. Six and a half minutes to go in the first period. First and 10 Nittany Lions from the 25. Bill Belton having a lot of success running the football early in the ball game. Picked up nine that time, Rod. What James Franklin said yesterday, he said he made a mistake. He said the mistake was getting away from his rushing attack and making the offense all about Christian Hackenberg. He said 99% of the offense went through Hackenberg. He's a 99%er. Can't do it. So it was determined tonight to be more patient with the rushing attack and Belton being productive four rushes for 49 yards so far sets up a very manageable second down and one Jesse James sets and Belton picks up the first down for Penn State Belton a pretty good receiver coming out of the backfield yeah yeah he's got the best hands of all the running backs and you know you watch him in pregame warm ups and he lines up with the receivers and runs down the field catching the deep ball. First and 10 from the 36. Belton stopped on a dime and no change left over. Brought down by Frank Clark for a loss of two. It was interesting going back to Belton after that loss in the wake of that loss to Northwestern last week. He felt compelled by some criticism of his quarterback to tweet for those of you wondering I still support my brother Christian Hackenberg hmm. getting across a not so subtle message to some of the haters out there. What haters on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> really. Second and 12. Belton back again. Bouncing it outside and brought down just shy of the 40, but he still picked up six yards. And, and that's the difference. I mean, that's patience with the running game on second and long. They ran the ball. Now, two weeks ago, they would have just said, Christian, get us out of this, throw it. But now they've got a manageable third down, a little bit better than a third and 12, third and 11. 
now you've got something where you don't have to worry about the blitz because you don't need as much time. Third and six. Little pressure coming. Hackenberg still alive. Finds Belton as the safety valve. And wow, they make lemonade out of lemons. A missed tackle on the play by Blake Countess. And a great move by Hackenberg. Well, yeah, I mean, when you only need third and five, you know, you can get rid of that ball. You can deal with the pressure. And he's not known for getting away from it. But he was nimble in the pocket that time and found his receiver, you know, Belton, to pick up the first down. But that's the key. They've got to stay out of third and long. They can have third and six or less. They can manage the blitz that they know will come from Michigan. James Franklin gave his team a few days off in wake of that loss against Northwestern last week. They had a bye week. So that they came back with a renewed sense of vigor and excitement looking forward to playing in the big house. Pass complete on the outside to Hamilton. And Hamilton shows you why he's the leader in the Big Ten in receptions coming into the game tonight. Picks up 13. Freshman having a great season. I mean, he is their key receiver on the outside. Quick receiver screen to Hamilton again. Got a nice block out there and a first down at the 22 yard line. Gino Lewis, fellow receiver rod, leaving the way. And, and notice the change in tempo. They're going much faster to the line of scrimmage. Just a wide receiver screen there. Good block by Lewis, freeing Hamilton. But they're changing the tempo, catching the Michigan defense a little bit off. Right now, they've slowed it down and gone back into the huddle. The pick up of 13 on that last play. Knows the ball resting at the 23. You know, that change of pace keeps you off pace defensively in terms of making your calls and lining up. Hackenberg gets rid of it quickly, finds Jesse James. His forward progress is going to be marked at about the 20, a three yard gain on the play. And that's the first time they find the tall James out there. And Monty Thomas making the stop. He is a mismatch problem. It's six foot seven. Particularly that's, down in the that's red zone. That's a post up, Rob. Right? It is a post up. He's a, he's a guy that can go in the low post and just call for the ball. <laughs> Second and seven. They hand it off to Zwinak. Trying to move that pile, and he makes it to the 18, picking up two. It'll be third down and five coming up for Penn State. And we have already documented a lot of their troubles in the red zone this year as Brady Hoke watches on a coach that has been beleaguered for the last three weeks, especially with several controversies and speculation about his relative job security. Mm -hmm. We think they might dial up a little pressure here. Here's the second 10 play drive tonight already. Third and five. Pass complete. But it's going to be short of the first down at the 15 yard line. Hamilton picks up three on the play. You know, he actually had more time to, to wait. And I think they're going to go for it here. I mean, the way they've run the ball. Oh, oh, he was unhappy with that. You see Franklin on the sideline there? Boy. Miscommunication. Looked like he was, I could be wrong here, but it looked like he was getting in the face of one of his yeah. coaches over there. I, I think they wanted to be ready to go to surprise That's Michigan. Fair. And, and run the play and the special teams the field goal team started on the field I think there was a, a once irate head coach James Franklin a little bit more sedate on the sidelines this was the scene a moment ago during the confusion on the sidelines on fourth down yeah he went right to his offensive coordinator about that because they were not on the same page they were trying to figure out to, whether to go for it now they're going to try the field goal here with uh, Ficken from 32 yards out made one earlier from 35 and Ficken is true we're going to stay right here the score is seven to six now but a pretty good start for Penn State you get the feeling though Rod that just six points to show for two very impressive long drives well and the impressive thing about it is that they found a rushing attack 
mean something they really haven't had this season. And when you do that you, you'd like to pay get it paid off. You just can't kick field goals all game when you get in the red zone and and that's been an issue all season. They were 40 percent in the red zone coming into the game and they've you know squandered another two opportunities here. So not good. You want to be 70 percent or better touchdown percentage when you're inside the 20. Penn State comes into the game at four and one big news recently some important sanctions have been dismissed and eliminated and an opportunity now for the Nittany Lions to make it to a bowl game this year you know I spoke with one of my neighbors down in South Florida O.J. McDuffer former great McDuffie with the Miami Dolphins mm -hmm. with Penn State and uh, he told me he had a chance to meet with Coach Franklin and his staff the week that they played Akron and said he's really excited about the future at his alma mater. A lot of four star recruits coming in. Yeah. Great young energy amongst the coaching staff and those guys really get it is what he said. So the future looking bright for Penn State. Real positive vibe there. Northfleet on the return. And Northfleet brought down just shy of the 30 yard line. Well folks get your NFL Sunday started on ESPN at 10 a.m. It's Sunday NFL countdown presented by Snickers. Host Chris Berman and the gang providing all the latest news and updates right up to kickoff and then catch our experts as they provide the latest news and predict the top fantasy performers on fantasy football now presented by Papa John's at 11 a.m. on ESPN 2. First down and 10 for the Wolverines. Kevin Gardner at quarterback. And a loss nice on the play. And nice Davion play. Smith chopped down by Molly Cole. Yeah. yeah. He's he's pretty darn good inside. He had 16 tackles against Northwestern in their last ball game, and he read that perfectly and just shot the gap and made that play. Loss of three on the play. Cole, the guy that stirs the drink back there, the straw that stirs the drink defensively for Penn State. Leads the conference in tackles per game coming into the game tonight. You know, Gard Gardner has been more of a uh, rollout guy the last week or so than a drop back guy. Let's see if they move him here. Gardner had that pass batted down. A little pressure coming off the edge from Jordan Lucas. You know, as we watched Gardner on tape, you know, it was clear that he's more comfortable rolling out, I think, than he is sitting in the pocket. and. I think he'll be more active tonight than we've seen him in the past. They'll roll him out. They'll they'll run him more. And I think that's probably good for him. Still kind of finding himself after being benched in that Minnesota yeah. game. But he seemed to catch rhythm as you mentioned earlier last week. Albeit in that loss against Rutgers. That was his first incompletion of the night. Last play of the quarter. And a dart complete at the 46 yard line. To Darbo. First and 20 after the hold. Gardner complete to Funches. Funches with nowhere to go on that little bubble screen. Good tackle by Mike Hull, as we mentioned earlier, the leading tackler in the Big Ten coming into the game tonight. Look at some of the next games up. Ole Miss, Texas A&M, a couple of good ones. USC, Arizona, out in the Pac-12 conference. Yeah, intriguing battle. How about who would have thought? The undefeated. Beatdown? Yeah, yeah, undefeated Arizona, and the beatdown Oregon put on Ooh. UCLA today. Second and twenty, no gain on that last play. Gardner has to be careful in this passing situation. Six picks. They set up the screen. He's picked off. Zettel. They tried to get it to Hayes on the screen, and just as you said, Rod, another interception. Well, the turnovers have been the problem for Michigan's offense, and it's the obvious passing situations where they've struggled, and they have to be careful with the football. And so you just had the feeling, thinking, okay, Gardner, don't try to do too much. Be careful with the football. And he throws it up there, and it just gets picked off right away by Zettel. And that's a guy who's got pretty good hands. Rod, your crystal ball is working at 100% here tonight. Mm. And turnover margin 
pretty much tells the story of the Michigan season the worst in FBS. Thus the two and four record coming in at the three game losing streak. Hackenberg working with a short field downfield complete. And another first down to Deshaun Hamilton. A nice throw. And it put him on the move to get him away from the pressure. Remember the last couple of series, a lot of blitzing by Michigan. They move him out to the side where he can see and not have any trouble, and he finds Hamilton easily. Now, remember back when they ran the Wildcat down here and they didn't have Hackenberg throw it? I don't think you'll see a Wildcat down here this this time. What do you think about Jesse James, the big fella? Like him. Six foot seven, matchup issue. Right now to the right slot of the formation. But they can run it with Bowden given where he's lined up. James in motion. They run it. And Felton to the middle of the field. Falls for no gain on the play. Joe Bolden, one of the voices on defense for that Michigan team, a young man we had a chance to visit with yesterday. There he is, number 35, playing a lot more physical this year, and he's really been. Uh, what did he what did he prideful. say? Yeah, what did he say to you about the, the Michigan brand? I've never heard a yeah. player talk about <laughs> a school's brand. <laughs> Said their brand is still good. Yeah, gotta keep up with the colors. Second and goal. Play action. And Hackenberg is gonna be brought down at the 10 yard line. Setting up a third down and goal. Good coverage that time by the Michigan secondary. It's a timing route. It's a three step. When it's not there, you got one hitch, two hitches, you got to get rid of it. Ojemodia in there to make the sack. Now Michigan will bring pressure. They want to force the issue. They know that Hackenberg generally is not going to be rolled out. He's going to be in the pocket. They think they know where he'll be. They can stifle Penn State has twice already in the red zone tonight. Had to settle for a couple of field goals. Third and goal here. Hackenberg. <laughs> Touchdown, <laughs> Hamilton. Oh, man. He threw a frozen oh. rope that melted right in the arms of his receiver, and there's where the interception that gave that play life started. Well, Hamilton had no choice. If he hadn't caught that ball, it was going to go right through him. And that is just a rocket that he squeezed in there. Man. What do you think about 90 miles oh. per hour on the judge oh, machine? Oh, oh, wow. And the first touchdown catch of the season for Hamilton, the first of his career. And set. Penn State with a six point lead. That touchdown set up by the interception from Anthony Zettel. And, uh, Jessica, he's been doing some special training, as I talked about earlier. Well, yeah, he has. He's loved it. He's actually loved him his whole life. But something he specifically worked on was something called Wing Chun, which is a traditional martial arts. It helps with his hand trapping, clearing his hands, hands for the O-line. It also helps him with his timing, his speed, and his fluidness, and his pass rushing movements, guys. Something that's very unique, which just shows the competitiveness that he has. And those are. Uh... Special MMA ninja powers were on display on that interception, the return by Norfleet. That makes your hands across the 27. Makes your hands softer. I mean, <laughs> man, I get it with the pass rushing, but maybe he just naturally has soft hands because he came up with that pick. Uh, that was pretty sweet. Yeah, coach was telling us that Zettel there on the sidelines, number 98, actually is a freakish athlete, mm -hmm. can drive a golf ball over 300 yards and can throw a football about 70 yards. A story. Not just folklore, but verified by quarterback Christian Hackenberg. Hmm. Some credibility for the yeah. big fellas up yeah. front. First and ten, meanwhile, from Michigan from their own 24. Justice Hayes in a tailback. Gardner delivers a strike this time. Finds Funches for seven yards. Jordan Lucas making the tackle on the play. What does Devin Gardner have to do to? Get back to where he was in that first quarter where he was so efficient on that first. Well, drive. they have to keep him out of the obvious passing situations. You know, throw on first down, run on second and long, and third and long, and not put him in the position where the turnovers are more likely. That's what's hurt them. They were minus 13, worst in the country essentially, in uh, in turnover margin. Second and three.
draw play. Nowhere to go for Smith. No gain on the play. And what about quarterback Devin Gardner playing for his third offensive coordinator? There's been a lot of turmoil. He had a position change a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. Came back to quarterback when Bernard Robinson was hurt. Uh, really kind of embodies some of the tumult that they've had here at Michigan. I, right? I think more than any other player on this squad, he's been hurt by the turnover more than anyone else. Three coordinators in his career. It's hard to get comfortable and settle in an offense when it's constantly changing on you. Third and three for Gardner. Falls forward close to the first down. Let's check out the spot here. Where do they put that football? You know, they're, they're pretty cavalier about that. <laughs> you know, one guy tosses the ball back to the other. No, I don't put it, whatever it, you want. It you know? does <laughs> seem a little bit arbitrary, yeah, doesn't it? It was pretty cavalier, you know? <laughs> First and <laughs> ten for Michigan. But, Rod, let's get back to Gardner. How tough is it to play for Rodriguez playing the spread option and then this system here? We'll talk about it it's crazy. after this play. Yeah, First yeah. and ten. Little pressure coming. They get rid of it in time, though. And the pass complete to Darbo. Yeah, what about well, the change in system? Well, he him? went from a system that was spread, hurry up, and really wasn't a progression read system. You know, you had a guy to go to to a more pro set offense where you're supposed to go from one, two, three receivers and also help with the protection. I mean, complete, it's like learning a foreign language, mm. you know. And that's a tough deal, and he's been getting comfortable, trying to get comfortable with time, and sometimes your mechanics can go off because you're not comfortable with the offense. The man that was sacked 34 times a season ago. That doesn't help either. Here's Smith. And Smith is stocked up a little bit behind the line of swimmers. Boy, Mike Hull has been up. Oh. Everywhere tonight. Yeah. And that's no surprise. As we mentioned earlier, he was all over the field against Northwestern with 16 tackles. He is freed up in the middle to roam. As long as the guys up front take on the guards, he is free to go make tackles because he's an excellent tackler, and that's the way that defense is set up. They want him involved. His dad, Tom, his uncle, John, both played football at Penn State. Almost predestined to play here himself. False start, offense number 67, five yard penalty. The down remains second. Kyle Kale is having a little bit of a tough night. It's a second penalty against them tonight. Mm. And what do you make of the uh, Michigan fans so far? A little bit silent for 109, 900. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, 109,000, pardon me. They seem into it when the game started and they were pretty supportive of the team. And now uh, they're pretty quiet now. The draw play, Justice Hayes picks up four. It'll be third and about 11 to go. I got a Michigan fan story for you. I don't know uh -huh. if this guy is representative at all, but I was in the elevator with Coach Franklin. He had on his Penn State garb and everything, and a fan from Michigan gets on with a yellow t shirt. Franklin says, Hey, I got some Penn State stuff I can give you. And the fan looked at him and said, I'm rooting for you. Wow. I want you to win. Wow. I want you to win so we can fire our coach. And Franklin said, Wait a minute, he's a good man. And he says, He may be a good man. But he's a lousy coach. Mm. I don't know if that fan's typical, but there's some of them in the stadium. There's some fans out there on the edges with a lot of vitriol. That pass complete at the 36-yard line. What a grab by Darbo. Working against Trevor Williams. And he just found that football. And he really had to get his head around to find this ball because it wasn't where he expected it. Watch him make the adjustment and turn back around. That's a nice job. That's a guy who missed most of last season with a foot injury. Big things were expected out of him. But this is his year now. Completely Rod, healthy. Rod, he was being held and pushed the whole time, it seemed like. Didn't too. bother him. Davion Smith in a tailback. Darbo already with four catches for 66 yards. Gardner still alive and finally brought down at about the 37-yard line. The coaching staff talked about wanting Gardner to run but wanting him to do it judiciously. 
Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I think they were going to try and help him. I mean, they don't want him to scramble as much. They want to give him design runs. And part of that, you know, is that, you know, Derek Green is out. But the other part of it is, I think they believe they are more of a rushing team and they were putting too much pressure on Gardner to carry the team with his arm. Five years ago, he came to Ann Arbor as one of the top three high school quarterbacks in the country. And using his legs here, but Penn State was sitting on it as they get tackled right on the fringes of field goal range that by Deion Wartman. Barnes. Yeah, I think Wartman was in there also. Number five was a guy who really made the initial contact in the move. Excellent outside linebacker. Player with a ten cast coming on. Yeah. yeah. You know, Jonesy, I, I, I think you're getting into two down territory. Already hope. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you're at the 36 here. Gardner finds his receiver. And Penn State swarming to the football. Makes the tackle short of the first down, an eight-yard gain on the play. Yeah. See, I, I think I think they'll go for it here. And Jake Butt, the receiver. Yep. They get up to the line quick. And the whistle comes before the snap. Prior to the snap, timeout. Michigan scored the only point of the game one point? on a place kick. What? It would take too long, folks, to explain the rules back then, so look it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> Grant Haley on the return. And he's brought down just over the 20 yard line, but Jessica, a lot going on here at Michigan this week. Yeah, you guys saw earlier a lot of the negativity surrounding the program. Brady Hoke told Brady Hoke told us this week it, the most it is the most important game of the year. Is working as hard as these guys have been. They need to reap those benefits. In fact, center Jake Miller told us yesterday this is so important because guys are angry. They're pissed off. And as hard as we are working, there should be more of a result. So this is a lot that they're putting on this game because of what's surrounding it. And that a direct quote from a couple of the Michigan players that we visited with last week. Brady Hope said, you know, I'm a former federal probation officer who's helped kids, and I have 115 sons out there on the field, and that's who I care about the most. On first down, Hamilton brought down just across the 20-yard line, picked up one as we throw it back to Adnan in the studio. It's an understatement, fellas, as they run it to Lynch. And Lynch breaks it out to the 30. So, Rod, do you put Baylor in your top four now? Not my top four. Let me ask you, Rod, do you put <laughs> Baylor in your top four Not now? Not my top four. <laughs> <laughs> How many points did they give up? 59? 58. 58? 58 points. Okay. 58 points. But they won. Yeah, they won. Yeah. And they played nobody in the, in the offseason, but they got TCU. I have them in the top 10. I got them in the top eight, but I, I won't have them in the top four. Hackenberg 50, sneaks for the 50, first down. 58. Okay, you were down in Dallas earlier this week at that panel discussion. Yeah. The college yeah. football committee simulation. Yeah. And tell us about the dynamics of that and what the variables that proved to be the important ones were. Or was there a consensus? Well, I think the important thing to note is that there is no agreement by people on what factors you use to determine the four best teams. Some people care about the eye test. Some people care about uh, whether you win a conference. Some care about the data. Uh, so people are going to be all over the board, and I think that the committee will likely be all over the board on factors as well. Mm. Ackenberg under heat. Escapes again, and prior to that, he had hit his last eight passes in a row. Godwin, the intended receiver. Let's go back to your stay in Dallas, and 
they basically played out what the 2008 season yeah, was we, it we took the 2008 season and looked at how we would seed and create the top four teams uh, from that perspective and then seeding the other 25 teams and so you know you had a chance to talk about what what's important to you now for me winning your conference and who you play matters so if you have a weak non-conference I marked you down for that right. and some of my colleagues on the mock committee didn't care who you played in the non-conference season what were some of the things that they rated I, higher I test and uh, simply whether they simply thought you were one of the best teams mm. Hackenberg going to be sacked back at the 28 yard line to make it third down and uh, he gets up really yeah. slowly here yeah kind of holding his left arm or left elbow they wanted to keep him out of harm's way that's the third sack for Bayer. Well, let's see the the end of it but um, you can't see what happened but he grabs his left elbow third and 13 for Penn State. Got man coverage on the outside and incomplete. Intended for Blacknell. The true freshman. And it's fourth down coming up for the Nittany Lions. So the Wolverine defense gets Hackenberg and Penn State off the field. And you were talking about Brady Hoke earlier. He, he told us he's still thinking out a bit about a Big Ten championship. While all the fans around here are talking about whether Brady Hope should be fired, he says he still thinks they can win the Big Ten. Trying to weed out a lot of the noise and static. Chub <laughs> Rocks. One of my favorite rappers <laughs> from the 90s. <laughs> Even Biggie. No big play there from Gardner, brought down by Barnes and Hull. Hull has been. Easily the most ubiquitous player all over the field today. Already a handful of tackles. Yeah, well, if they don't find somebody to get in his face, he's going to make about 20 tackles tonight. I mean, he just runs down anything between the numbers. Seven tackles already. Yeah. yeah he's a really good player. You mentioned his great lineage. His dad played football at Penn State. His uncle John played as a Nittany Lion as well. Pressure here from Penn State. Third and eight, and we're gonna have a timeout called by Michigan. Timeout. Michigan. They're second. Wolverines Team trailing timeout. by three here. Back after the timeout, Michigan with the football. Third down and seven. A little over a minute to go here in the first half. Each team with a timeout remaining. Gardner trying to pass it and swarmed and sacked. Back at the 28 yard line by Dion Barnes. And a timeout called now to stop the clock, wisely so, by Coach Franklin. Hey, just watch the move here. They're just going to run a little stunt and get a man free. You'll see number 18 show up in your picture there. That is a stunt being run inside there to make the play. That's Barnes, number 18, coming around. And Penn State might get a chance to do something here when they get the football, although they burned their last time out. To flip the field and get a little bit of gain in field position. Yeah, you know, you, you talked about sacks last season for yeah. Michigan. Yeah, 34. They're number 92 in sacks this year. They had 13 coming in. What they picked up two tonight, three tonight? The meter keeps running. Jesse Della Valley back on his own 24 yard line for the Nittany Lions. Will Hogrup punting from his own 18 low snap. But he gets it away in a high spiral. Bounces at the 32. And is down to the 29. A 38 yard punt, nothing on the return. Hackenberg, who has been clutch. In late game situations and at the end of periods, pardon me, quarters at several points in his young career, with an opportunity here at least to get them into field goal range. Sam Ficken has a long of 42 yards this year. 
Well, they run two minute drill all the time. He's comfortable with it. An opportunity now to run the 46 second drill. Hackenberg on the out complete. To get out of bounds and stop the clock at the 37 yard line. Gino Lewis with his first re reception of the night. Probably need to get to the 30 yard line to have a realistic shot. Now, we saw Ficken booming them yeah. in warmups today. I, I think he's probably got enough leg to go 55. Yeah, he's got a career long of 54, so that's right in his wheelhouse. Yeah. So you get him down to somewhere around that 30, 35 yard line, you'd feel pretty good about your chances. 42 seconds to go in the half. Hackenberg threw it low, and it's incomplete at the 46 intended for Godwin. Third and two coming up. Well, you know, you have enough time that you don't have to work the sidelines. You, you could throw it over the middle of the field, pick up a first down, stop the clock, rush up there, and, and still get going here. Rod, it brings into the focus the timeout that Coach Franklin had to yeah. burn during that little special team fourth mm -hmm. down situation. Yep. Miscommunication they appeared to have on the sidewalk. Yep. You're so right. Complete. Where are they going to mark this one? He appeared to catch it right near the marker. And they spot it short of the first down, but regardless, the clock now running as they spot the ball. Fourth and one coming up. And that pretty much yeah, that, kills their chances. Yeah, yeah, that'll end it. They'll let this go. Timeout. Michigan. So Michigan third, wants to force them to, to kick. They, they want to have a shot at it. Hmm. If you're Penn State, if you start wondering, well, what, what can we do here? Could we, do we <laughs> kick it? Do we try Hail Mary? But you are so far away. We've seen from the end so many Hail Mary situations this year. I don't know if it's just me, Rod, an in, inordinate <laughs> amount. Maybe it's just the games we've had. You know, mostly oh, in, in the Pac-12. Crazy. We've seen some, but uh, I mean, Hackenberg has a pretty strong arm. If you you can get it at least down to the the ten yard line. Yeah. Well, they look looks like they're trying to take a shot at it. It's an it's an all or nothing. Of course, there's a little bit of risk on both sides, but who has more risk here? You think? Is is it even? Is it? Well, if you get one picked off, you got a bunch of linemen trying to tackle folks out there. You know, there, there's a risk in that. But assuming he lays it out there all the way, more risk for Michigan than for, for Penn State. They are rushing four, not just three, and it proved to help with the sack on Hackenberg. And that's going to be the end of the first half of play. That's Avion Smith in a tailback. First down and ten from the 25. Gardner had that one drop and that won't help Funches their most productive receiver this year can't afford to do that second and ten coming up what that does is it takes you out of second and short it puts you in second and long and you know what Penn State says we will dial up the pressure you know Hall's going to sit there in the middle they're going to bring a backer from the inside or the outside and they're going to try and put more pressure and force Gardner into a mistake. Oh, with a ton of tackles already tonight. Gardner surveying. Uses that straight arm and makes it out to the 27 yard line. Jordan Lucas forced him out of bounds. Picked up a couple of yards on the play, maybe third down and eight. Yeah, there was nine coming up. There was nothing there for Gardner. I mean, he did the right thing. You just watch the coverage. You got all these guys settling in for short passes, and everybody runs a short route. No one's open. There is nowhere to go with the football. He did a smart thing by trying to run with it. These two teams played a four overtime thriller 
last year in State College, Pennsylvania. Partner, we might be in store for a little extra time tonight the way this one's going. Third and nine, a little blitz coming. Gardner, backside pressure, and they sack him at the 20. Who else? Mike Hull. The clock has to go off in your head. Hull took the long route around. He's in the on the right side of your screen. He's going to get kind of pushed out. He's going to take the long, circuitous route to come around and get there. The clock has to go out, and you have to realize you got to get rid of it. That was held a little bit too long. Got around Mason Cole, the left tackle. Fair catch called back at the 42 yard line by Jesse Della Valley. And Penn State will have good field goal, pardon me, field position after the 38 yard punt. I go back to that play for a second. You know, Gardner has had so many picks. I mean, he's being extra cautious and careful. Right. He doesn't want to throw the ball into a place and have a turnover when he's not absolutely sure, which is why he's holding on to it so long. Now, punting is better than having a pick. So in that instance, taking the sack makes it preferable to throw on a pick. Well, it's always a little confusing, Rod, when I see a guy that, that runs as well as he yeah. does. Take a sack after really surveying the field for as yeah. long as he did. Yeah, that I hear you. Elton on the sweep. Elton pushed out of bounds at the 46 yard line. Got a nice block up front from Angelo Mangiro. Four yard gain on the play. Hey, what did you make of all the former players showing up to uh, support Brady Hope? Today? I think it's a great thing here, part of the great tradition at Michigan and some of the successful history they've had over the decades and anything that helps galvanize a program which has been beleaguered in the last couple of weeks Brady Hope even calling on a member of Navy SEAL Team 5 to address his team last night. That pass incomplete intended for Lewis. It's scooped up. That's touchdown Michigan. Hollowell. Hollowell with it. Now, did that hit the ground? It, I think that hit the ground. I mean, I don't think that's a catch. We're going to have to take a look at yeah, this. Yeah, I think that hit the ground. That hit the ground. That's an incomplete pass. He never had control of that. That hits the ground. That's yeah, an incomplete hit pass. Yeah, the ground. Yeah. That's not six points. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a nice try and a good fake. And it wasn't a lateral play. either. No. It's under further review. That, that's Rolling just an incomplete an pass. Interception for a touchdown. Now you, you brought up the other point. Could it have been a backwards pass, a lateral? But this is thrown ahead of him, it looks like, from that angle. So as long as yeah, that's, that's a forward, yeah, as long as that's a forward pass, that's incomplete. And I can't tell from that angle. There's nothing from that angle that's to suggest that pass. it's a backwards yeah. pass at all. Now yeah, this has got to come back. It'll be Penn State football. It was almost as if Franklin was in that official ear saying, "You guys are going to look yeah. at this, right?" So that's. Yeah, that's clearly a forward pass. Looks like he's beyond the line of scrimmage and he just dropped it. Display under review. A lot, of, a lot of drama going back to last year's game. Talked about it being the four overtime matchup and how it proved to be the longest game in Big Ten history. A game that Michigan. Let's slip away. That was a, that was an incredible game. Yeah, I, I remember sitting uh, sitting in a, in a place after our game watching it. Joe Tessitore, and Matt Millen had the call. Further review. The play was an incomplete forward pass. It'll be third down. Please set the clock to 13, 28. One, three, two, eight. You know, sometimes with all the replay that goes on these days. You don't believe your eyes sometimes in what you see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to be honest with you. It, may, it does make you question it, yourself. It but sets the climate sometimes. You know, and, and you know, and we, we spend time on the rules. We feel pretty good about yeah. it. But you know, there's that moment where you go, ah. <laughs> Just being honest. Third and six for Penn State. And a little motion up front by Donovan Smith, the left tackle. Well, he's their best lineman. False start. Offense. Number 76. 
Five yard penalty. The down remains third. Well, Hackenberg is going to have to do it again here. Young man that made his phone call early to head coach James Franklin after Bill O'Brien left for the Houston Texans and told him, Coach, I'm staying. I'm going to stay true to my commitment. Hackenberg incomplete intended for Blacknell the true freshman in fourth and eleven coming up. He talked about Hackenberg sticking around I think one of the one of the key factors was that Bill O'Brien and James Franklin are good friends. Mm -hmm. right. And O'Brien kind of helped facilitate that relationship. And Hackenberg knew things weren't going to change dramatically and O'Brien felt really really good about Franklin taking over. Northfleet back for this punt. Calls for the fair catch to Michigan. Michigan. Michigan trying to snap its three game losing streak against Penn State. Down by three right now with the ball first down and 10 from the 17. Avion Smith then picked the handoff and Gardner has it. And Gardner picks up the first down. A 25 yard gain. And they keep looking for ways to run the ball or to get something on first down to keep Gardner comfortable. Why not just let him run it? They did it that time. You think they've turned him loose enough on the run, Ron? Nah, they got they got to go a little bit more. I mean, if the first down passes aren't working to get you to second and short, you've got to run Gardner more, and you got to you got to sprint him out, roll him out. I think he's more comfortable like like that. Certainly looks like a different quarterback than the one going into the Minnesota game several weeks ago. A little blitz coming. Gardner gets rid of it and finds Smith. He gets another first down across midfield to the 45. Let's go back to the studio. All right, guys, back here first and 10 for the Wolverines after the 13 yard pickup. Gardner and Smith seem to have a little malfunction at the junction that time. I have a Rob. question for you about that Alabama score. So, why is it when a top team out of the SEC loses? We talk about how great the SEC is, but when a top team out of the Pac-12 loses, we talk about how weak the Pac-12 is. I think maybe the perception is, or some of the reality is, that people in the SEC will tell you because of their championship history the last eight, nine years mm -hmm. that like they're due the benefit of the doubt. Like Ole Miss and Mississippi State have yeah. had a long championship history. <laughs> All right, I got you. I'm just saying. The conference as a whole. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> second and nine. That pass complete to Devin Funches as we take a look at our top 10 brought to you by Allstate. Florida yeah. State uh, winning again. I mean, you know, look at this. We got how many teams? One, two, three. Mississippi State, Ole Miss. Four. Ole Miss played nobody in the in non-conference except for Boise State. Mississippi State played no one. And then they beat Alabama and everybody goes, hey, they're a top five team. Mm. <laughs> I just don't that get it. Best conference, I'll give you that. Right. You don't think the gap's as big as maybe some people <laughs> think it is. Back shoulder fade incomplete. Intended for Freddie Canteen, the true freshman. Hey, speaking of conference strength, what about the Big Ten where we are now in Michigan State winning again today? If Michigan State wins out, wins the championship for the conference, are they in your where are they top four I, I, just on the edge I've said all along if Michigan State wins the Big Ten the fact that they went on the road to Oregon and played them well for three plus quarters but didn't to, win did not win doesn't matter to me that's credibility and I would put that conference champ with a tough non conference schedule in over someone who did not play mm -hmm. anyone in the non conference fourth and three the Wolverines going for it incomplete. Intended for Darbo and the Nittany Lions take over on downs as Brady Hope and it had a great light show on it. How long, half time. How long does it take for them to do that? How do they figure that out? <laughs> First and ten. A little bubble screen for the outside receiver. The sicky. You know these two teams are very similar offensively. They're both trying to find a way to get four yards on first down because they can't run 
run it very well consistently. So it's okay, quarterback, design run, a quick pass, something to get them into second and short, third and short, because they're trying to stay out of that third down situation where the pressure comes. Hackenberg passes again and finds his receiver, the tall, lanky, and rangy Jesse James picks up six. You said he looked about 6'10 on the field, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, with the helmet and the cleats on. I'm just surprised that they haven't used him more tonight. I I, just, I thought they'd find a way to get him a bit more involved, particularly down inside the 20. Third and two. They run it and pick up the first down. Zwinak picks up three. You know, you talked abroad about the inability Penn State to run. You think about all the great running backs yeah. that have played there through the years. Franco Harris, mm -hmm. uh, Kajana, Kajana Carter, Carter, John Capaletti. Yep. I mean, to think that they are where they are now, but Kurt you know, Warner, how yeah. could we forget him? Blair Thomas, yep. Larry Johnson. This is a new day, a new age for Penn State football. The sanctions have been lifted. They can go to a bowl game this year. Pass is caught and complete at the 44 to Kyle Carter. Great hands and feet to pick up seven. Nice job. You talk about a new day. Look at the hurry up offense and a great throw by Hackenberg. And the old day, they had pretty good quarterbacks also to at Penn State. Akeel Lynch in the backfield. Hackenberg complete quick slant to Gesicki again. And that's a first down for the Nittany Lions having a little bit of success changing the tempo here Rob. Yeah. I think about those quarterbacks Chuck Fusina Todd Blackledge. Wow. Kerry Collins. Rich history. And that tempo you talk about has changed a little bit. Given Michigan's defense less time to get lined up. Lynch dotting the eye formation in the backfield. Carter in motion. They run it. They know where to go that time. For Akeel Lynch, stopped by James Ross, the third, a loss of one on the play. Ross was unblocked on the edge and just came in and made the tackle. He was the, the free man. We talk about eight guys in the box and one guy you can't block. Ross was the guy who was not assigned a blocker. No one, no one in front of him. Just watch him. He's number 15 to the outside. No one for him. Comes up cleanly. Makes a nice tackle. He's the free man in the box. We'll see some of those mistakes by Penn State from time to time. This is, after all, the second youngest team in the FBS. That pass a little bit low and incomplete, intended for Hamilton. All right, so here we go. You know, you know Michigan's going to bring the heat. Hackenberg is not the most mobile quarterback. How do you play it here? Screen, do you draw? Do you do something quick to just try and get yourself in better position for a field goal? Because picking up 12 to 13 is going to be tough with the heat he's going to get right now. 50% on third downs tonight. Blackmaw split wide to the top of your screen. Field incomplete. The intended receiver, Chris Godwin, forced out of bounds seemingly by Raymond Taylor. And, and I think that's what the flag is for. He was ineligible once he went out of bounds. Sets up a fourth down and 11. Spotting the ball at about the 37 yard line. So it would be about a 54 yarder if they attempt the field goal. That's that's a little bit rich a yeah. little rich right now with the three point lead. Yeah, they're going to punt instead and they're going to fake it go for it on the fly sweep and Michigan deciphers it and destroys it. Great play and a nice tackle on the play by McRae. 
Talk about players working hard, being prepared, doing their job, not falling asleep. This tells you this team is engaged, not taking a play off. That's a great play. You have every reason to take the situation for granted, but they don't. Grant Haley didn't make enough yards for the first down, and great reaction there by Brady Hope, the head coach. A loss of two, and they take over on downs. Gardner hands it off. And two yards and a cloud of dust. You notice we don't see many chunk plays out of Michigan. We saw Funches get a touchdown on a ball that was thrown up for grabs, but they don't have enough guys who can make a guy miss and get you 25, get you 30. Mm -hmm. I mean, the most explosive guy they have right now, you know, I think, is Gardner. And, and it's hard to get him freed up to run for 30 yards or so. I mean, he had one for 25, but can't do that very often. Second and eight. Gardner drills it complete. Couple yards short of the first down to number one Funches. Funches, remember, the former tight end played tight end for a couple years. Now, use him as a wide receiver and uh, switched his number accordingly from number 87 to number one. He's the first Michigan player to wear it since Braylon Edwards in 2004. They're going to try and go for the sneak here on third and short, and he didn't make it. It's going to be fourth down coming up. Not much movement at all. Yeah. And that's that's a long way to go for a sneak. Even for a guy like Gardner yeah, who's a good runner. You, you just don't have any momentum. You're under center. You're just trying to wedge yourself and you know the defense is going down underneath and he's limping now. That is not a good sign no. for Michigan offensively. Devin Gardner and his backup Shane Morris have both had nicks and bruises and bumps. Look at the. Penn State defensive line win the battle by getting lower than the Michigan offensive line. And now Gardner limping completely off. That means we're likely to see Shane Morris. And the quarterbacking carousel at Michigan would appear to rotate one revolution here as Shane Morris, who suffered a concussion a couple of weeks ago against Minnesota. And a bad ankle to boot. Yep. They, they cleared him a few days ago for this game. That'll be worth watching to see what happens there. Yeah, just going to goes it down to the sidelines. Hopefully get a little news from the sidelines on that. This is going to be a great punt down right around the five yard line by the Wolverines. State. Going from his own six. Completes it. And a nice catch and run by Jesse James still on his feet. Moving that little pile across the 20 to the 22. A nice gain of 16 yards. And there's a look at Bellamy warming up on the sideline. Russell Bellamy, who hasn't thrown that much in his entire career. He's, that doesn't look good for no, Gardner. No, and Bellamy's the third string quarterback. We were told this week Shane Morris was cleared and as number two ready to play. But that appears not to be the case. Now Bellamy, the one throwing, and not Morris. First and ten for the Nittany Lions. Handoff goes to Akeel Lynch, who picks up three. Shane Morris started the game against Minnesota a couple of weeks ago when they benched Gardner, and this was the big hit right there. Yeah. That was a concussion hit. A concussion that 100,000 people plus saw, a, a national television audience saw, yet no one affiliated with the Michigan football program saw it and sent him back out on the field. And that yeah. created a lot of controversy yeah. for the entire football program. They have since revamped their protocol and their procedures. Second and six on the counter. And Lynch picks up about two, third and four to go now for Penn State. With four and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. And if you think that James Franklin is being a little bit conservative here, well. Sure looks like it. Yeah, but it makes sense. You know, they're backed up. They have a three-point lead. And the opposing team's quarterback situation looks shaky. So you don't want to do anything to give them points here. And this is a little bit easier third down situation than a third and long. Little blitz coming by Michigan. Flag down, Hackenberg. Picked off. 
Michigan takes it away at the 28. Jordan Lewis. And that's why you choose to be conservative down here. They heated him up with a lot of pressure, Rod. But but that's no surprise. You know the pressure's Turn coming. Play holding offense number 73. That penalty is the prime first down. And that's just not game awareness. You're Christian Hackenberg. You know you have a three-point lead. You're backed up. You know the pressure's coming. You can't throw this up for grabs. He's rolling backwards. He has nothing on this, and he throws it late over the middle. That's a young player making a bad decision. He won't make that again. But this makes no sense in this situation. It's a bad throw late over the middle. Now you've given a team that had no momentum and a quarterback issue you gave given them really good position. That's Russell Bellamy in a quarterback taking his first. Well he's not even on the statute folks. He hasn't thrown a pass this year. He's four of twenty one career and hands it off making the safe move to Davion Smith. As and I mentioned he's four of twenty one in his career has thrown four interceptions not the time that you want to no. quote unquote work him in. Right. Uh, well I think that's right and if you're Penn State that's exactly what you start thinking. You say hey wait a minute. This guy. We're going to force him to throw the ball to beat us. So you you run blitz on first down, second down. You bring a, a third down blitz. You make him the focal point if you're Penn State defensively. Bellamy hasn't thrown a pass, folks, in two years. Hasn't thrown it since 2012. Smith in the backfield. And they hand it off. Nowhere to go down at the 25-yard line. Barnes making the stop on the play. Well, and, third and seven. And Hope's doing the right thing. He and Nussbaum, as far as calling plays here, you know, let Bellamy get comfortable. You're you're in the third quarter, late third quarter. He's going to have to play the fourth quarter for you more than likely. You've got a shot at a field goal off of a turnover. Take the points if you get the shot, but don't turn it over and don't lose yardage if you're Michigan. So being conservative right now is not a bad thing. From the 25, Justice Hayes in a tailback beside Bellman. He's going to try and throw it here, and it's planted down at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. Yeah, and they he was settled. Yep. With the handwork. Yep. That has been the talk of the night. Yeah, Zettel with the pick and <laughs> knocked down that ball, and, and they heated up Bellamy. They brought the pressure, which was what you would expect with the new quarterback and inexperienced quarterback in the game. Now they're going to go for the field goal. Matt Weil will attempt this field goal. He was from pretty, 42. He was solid in warm-ups from this distance. It was beyond 45 that he struggled in warm-ups. For the tie. And he drills it good. We are tied at 13. Nodded. But the question begs. What about the health of Devin Gardner. Will he be back tonight. And you know this says as much about the health or lack thereof of Shane Morris Rod that we were told he was the number two guy going into the game and they bypass him and go to Russell Bellamy. Well I think it also raises the issue of how you deal with guys with concussions and I think Michigan has decided they're going to be conservative with them and that if you were to put him back out on the field and he were to take another hit. You would be accused of having rushed him back out there. And why take that risk? If you're mostly concerned about the health and well being of a player, I think this is the right decision by Brady Hope not to put Shane Morris out there. You know, in boxing, if you right. get a concussion, they, yeah. they sit you out for, what, 90 days? Yeah. Well, it was Brady Hope that told us, you know, I got 115 sons. And what matters most to me is them. Yeah well you know the public didn't buy that because <laughs> no I mean he, you know he should have said yeah. when he had his press yeah. conference hey we messed up. Yeah. You know it didn't matter if he actually saw it or anybody else had he simply said we messed up the public would have accepted it and went, okay yeah you've been coaching 30 years it's never happened before we get it. From the five it's Haley. And Haley is brought down at about the 23 yard line. Let's see how Christian Hackenberg responds to throwing that interception the last time he put the ball up in the air. This young man that is just 19 years old has had several long successful clutch drives late in games already in his young career. Yeah and they simply put too much pressure on him 
to make things happen and that's what he was trying to do that last play and not recognizing the situation that they could be conservative. He'll be more judicial. He's been clutch in the fourth quarter for them. James in motion. Pass complete on the edge to Hamilton. And he's met immediately by Jake Ryan. And there's a flag down on the play. I'll be judicial. He can be judicious. That too. Yeah. <laughs> During the play, holding offense number 18. That penalty is declined. It'll be second down. They take the loss. Approaching two minutes to go here in the third quarter under the lights here at the big house. A similar situation for Hackenberg, and he has to be aware of the fact that there may be pressure and there may be double coverage on Hamilton. This is where having a big tight end, if you have to throw it, is helpful. Hackenberg incomplete. Hey Rod, it's something we talked about in our meetings. Hackenberg at some point, you know, on occasion has been his own worst critic. You see signs of him getting down on himself after that pick a little bit? Uh, you know, he's he's a little bit frustrated, you can tell that, but he's being smart there. That screen pass wasn't there, and he threw the ball away to come back and play the next the next down. You see he started great, he struggled since then. This is a big third down. It's a long, it's a tough situation. He has to know pressure and that they're going to take Hamilton away. So he's got to be smart here. Belton in the backfield beside him. They roll him out of the pocket and nowhere to throw. And, well, the closest white jersey was Kyle Carter. The problem was there were four guys in maize and blue around him and that whole drive lasted all of 34 seconds. Yeah you know and they moved him out of the pocket and he's not great on them on the run but they had to move him because they're getting too much pressure when they sit him in the pocket. Right now this is becoming a defensive struggle and maybe it'll take a special teams play to tip the balance. Norfleet from Michigan standing at his own 40 yard line. Directional kick, not a great effort that time by Chris Gula, the freshman from Toms River, New Jersey, who came into the game averaging a little over 38 yards a punt, and they're going to spot this on Penn State side of midfield. So wow. once again, Russell Bellamy in for his second series now after the injury to Devin Gardner will great will have great starting field position after the 26 yard punt. Now he's not the same kind of runner as Gardner and he's a guy who had a had an ACL injury a couple of years ago. So you don't think so much about quarterback design runs with him. Well, Bellamy almost picked by Mike Hull who had a beat on that mm -hmm. one and he's thinking about how much do they trust Bellamy to throw. They run it to the middle of the field and he's brought down for a loss. Justice Hayes met by Parker Cothran a loss of three as we go down to Jessica. Well guys Devin Gardner came off the field they immediately looked at his left ankle since then a member of the medical staff has had his helmet and he's been walking around the sideline limping almost trying to will his ankle back into feeling better but they have not returned his helmet and they have done nothing as far as drills to see if he can go back into this game. Rod that's part of the new protocol right yeah. since the concussion injury to Shane Morris and there's a look at what they've done. Yeah the third point down there take the helmet away from a player who's injured so he can't get back in the game. Third and 14 they run it again. Hayes no justice on that play and a chorus of boos cascading down from the fans here. Yeah. yeah they, they want to see excitement. They want to see them throw the ball. But you know this is the right call. You've got a third string quarterback and you've had two passes. Both of them were almost picked by linemen. Mm -hmm. Well linemen and a linebacker. 
is that you really can't take too many chances and turn the game over. You're hoping your defense can play well enough to win the game for you. This punt goes into the end zone as goes over the head of Della Valley. A 45 yard punt. It'll come back out though. And Hackenberg still trying to find his mojo. If nothing else, he's proven in the past that he can find it late when it most counts. But right now, 18 seconds to go in the third quarter. Penn State looking for its fifth victory of the season. If you're just joining us, we've mentioned at the top of the show the sanctions, if you haven't heard already, have been lifted this year. Many of the major ones against the team. Yeah, they're and not they getting, are bowl eligible. Yeah, but they're not getting that 60 million bucks back. Well, that one will be paid in full. Belton makes it back to the 20. No gain on the play. That'll be the last play of the third quarter. Michigan and Penn State deadlocked at 13. Will Brady Hope's team go into overtime against a different coach this time on the other side of the field? Coach James Franklin and Penn State, they did four overtimes last year. One for the start of the fourth quarter, Penn State and Michigan deadlocked. At 13, Hackenberg under duress and brought down at about the 20 yard line, right at the line of scrimmage by Frank Clark. This is just a slugfest. I mean, both <laughs> teams have the same approach. No one has a player that's really has the time and ability to make a chunk play, and neither one can protect the quarterback. And both teams are saying, You can't run, so we're going to bring it. And this is like a war of attrition because I don't know who's going to be able to make a play. Both quarterbacks are under duress every single play it seems. I hand it off and right back to the line of scrimmage where he started Bill Belt and it'll be fourth and ten. I get the feeling Rod we're going to see a bunch of punts here in the fourth quarter with the anemic offense is emerging. Here. Yeah it's probably going to come down to someone making a play in special teams knocking a ball loose or a big play on defense because both offensive coordinators seem to be looking at this like I can't put my quarterback in a bad spot. I'll go up with the punt. Sticks and stays right near midfield at the 49 yard line. A 29 yard punt. Gardner has his helmet back. That is news, big news for Michigan. And it appears is, as if he's going to come back is, is into it, the ball game. Is it my imagination or was he limping a la Willis Reed? And you can hear the fans. Listen in. Hundred nine thousand here tonight. Funches also back in the ball game after being shaken up earlier. Downfield, incomplete at the twenty yard line. Funches tried to reach behind and haul it in, but he couldn't. He's thrown behind him. What do you make of his mobility? Well, let's take a look at this first. Well, I just want you to see all the pressure that's coming, and there's a guy out here you can't see who's going to come as well. They're, they know they've got a guy who really can't move, and they bring seven. They bring seven. And I don't expect that to change. Maybe they'll drop down to six, but they will keep coming after Gardner or whoever else lines up the quarterback for Michigan. Let's see what the counter is for the Wolverines offensively. It's driven quickly into the scene, complete. And down to the 25 yard line, Norfleet with the first down as Gardner. Limps off feet downfield. 24 yard gain. What a gutsy throw. He can't move. Watch him stand in there and take the hit. Now, that might have been flagged because of the hit to the helmet. There was an arm, a forearm to the helmet that went unnoticed. CJ Olanian with the hit on Gardner. But the ball quickly down to the 25 yard line of the Nittany Lions. Smith in a tailback. Smith runs it. Ran through one would-be tackler, makes it down to the 19-yard line, a gain of two. Let's take one more look at that 
hit was it legal or not. That's a hit to the helmet. That's a hit to the head by by the forearm and that should have been flagged as a personal foul. Mm. One of the points of emphasis during the last couple of years. Now they are in field goal range that one throw gave them a shot so he limped on the field to give them one shot. Mm. I doubt that they will let him throw again because a sack might push them out of field goal range. He's in the ball game a tailback on second and eight. Gardner completes it to Funches, and he falls forward to the 20 to pick up four. It'll be third down and about four to go. And you see him uh, really still limping. in pain. Wow. Yeah. And that was a a quick throw, more like a long handoff. But I, I just don't believe that they uh, that they would take the chance of having him drop back and throw the ball, given he can't move and the pressure. Remember, there's a guy Gardner that broke his foot against Ohio State last year, but stayed in the ball game and threw. For 451 yards. Third and five. Northfleet in motion. Pressure coming. Gets it away and incomplete. And fourth down coming up. And Gardner has to get up off his backside one more time. Let me ask you something, partner. Should he be out there? You have a guy who can't move well enough to protect himself. Should he be out there? Mm. Well, he can't move. He's got the bad ankle. This is what's going to happen. He's a statue back there. Yeah, right he's going to keep taking shots because he can't move and can't protect himself. Now I'm not trying to pile on Brady Hope, but but that's the kind of analysis and thinking you do. But he doesn't seem to have a healthy quarterback that he believes in and has confidence in. That wow, from 37 for the lead, and he makes it. The ball game after missing. The two previous series on offense. Some sort of leg injury. This will come out to the 25 yard line as we kick it back to the studio. Guys, back here, first and ten from the 25 yard line for Penn State. Max lining up out of the eye. Little waggle action. The pass completed the 30 to Geno Lewis. Just his second reception of the day. Lewis, one of their main threats at receiver coming into the season, picks up eight on the play. His dad. Eugene Lewis senior actually played basketball at the University of South Alabama. He's a second round pick of the Utah Jazz. Great lineage there athletically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second and two. Twelve personnel. Two tight ends. Belton breaks through the line initially. A gain of about seven on the play for Bill Belton, who last year had that five yard game winning touchdown in that. Actually, it was against Rutgers, pardon me, last week. You'd think that two tight end formation would help them with pass protection and also help them run the football a little bit. Right now, the pressure is all on Hackenberg because they're having trouble protecting him, but he's going to have to make a play for them ultimately. And he split out at wide receiver in their Wildcat formation now. Belton took the snap and hands it off to Lynch. And Akeel Lynch, the six foot sophomore out of Toronto, Canada, picks up four. Michigan has tightened up the defense, tightened the vice around the Penn State rushing attack. And they have more guys hanging around the line of scrimmage, bringing pressure, and really forcing. Penn State to throw. Where does that make the vul them vulnerable? If well, if, if you get a little time, you've got pretty much some single coverage on the outside, but you need time to get there. Hamilton in motion. Hackenberg given time and completes the pass. Belton, a good receiver out of the backfield. 
stopped up about two yards short of that first down. It'll be third down coming up after the five yard game. Hackenberg looked better to you. Uh, less, I would think. Less shaky yeah. following that pick back in, what was it, late third quarter, early fourth quarter? Yeah. Looks like he's getting some of that rhythm back. Yeah. Third and two now, though. I'd be surprised if they tried to run for it here. Michigan's done a good job of shutting that down. They've got the tight ends, and those are big, big targets for them. An extra offensive lineman in the ball game. The sneak. They got a nice surge there, and a favorable spot. Yeah. And it looks, appears to be enough for the first down. Mm. Hackenberg getting it done himself. Initially stopped, but no one at his legs, no whistle blown, and he's able to kind of fall forward. And he gets a good spot, and they pick up the first down. Hackenberg, a 19 year old whose dad, Eric, grew up in Pennsylvania Coal Town and was spurned by Joe Paterno in Penn State, ended up playing backup quarterback at the University of Virginia. His son always wanted to be Time a Nittany Lion. Their first team timeout. And now playing Media. for head coach timeout. James Franklin. 42 floors up when it hit. Wow. Yeah. Wasn't pretty. First and ten. Belton kind of waited for the hole to develop, but it never did. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. 10 to go. Penn State comes in at 4 and 1. On the heels of a loss a couple of weeks ago at home against Northwestern. How committed is Michigan to stopping the run? Look at all the guys that are hanging around. Seven with safeties ready to come flying in. Hackenberg tucked it under, stays alive, and got rid of it to Belton to the 49 yard line. But there was a missed tackle there by Ryan Glasgow. No gain on the play. It'll be third down and 10. I sound like a broken record, but they can't protect him. Yeah. Whether they bring five or four, they can't protect Hackenberg. Only one returning starter from a season ago for Penn State on that offensive line. Gardner watches from the sidelines, perhaps hoping for another opportunity to put this game on ice for the Wolverines, trying to snap that three game losing streak and quiet some of the detractors. Hamilton in motion. Hackenberg tries to do it with his legs, but can't. Picks up one yard. It'll be fourth and long coming up. Ryan and Bolden making the tackle on the play. He's not going to pick up many first downs rushing it like that not on a third and ten and it becomes a field position game for Penn State. Get back on the winning track first and ten for Michigan. Devin Gardner is back in a quarterback. But severely hampered by a sprained ankle. Hands it off to Justice Hayes for five yards. Two tight end formation. They're committed to running the ball. They can't run the quarterback. They can't throw the ball from a drop back. They just want to pound it out and try and shorten the game. A lot of confidence in their defense right now. Second down and five. Gets to the edge. Turn the corner out of bounds to the 23. Let's go down to Jessica. Well, guys, the last five minutes on the sideline for Devin Gardner. He has been the most communicative, energetic, just pacing the sideline. And I am a bit surprised that he has not sat down once with that ankle. He's definitely limping, but you can just tell with his energy that despite the pain, he wants to be in this game. Well, it's interesting. We spoke with Brady Hogue, and I asked him what was Gardner's reaction after he was benched for the Minnesota game. 
said they met and they talked and he told coach hey I'm well he said I'm mad so to speak to yes. paraphrase it but it was the right reaction Hoke said and he expected him to feel that way and he's handled the adversity well and he get off to Smith who plows ahead for a gain of about six it gives some props to that offensive line and particularly Miller Jack Miller at center Eric Magnuson at the left guard spot. I mean, those guys had to find a way to block and pick up a first down here to shorten the game and get better field position, and they got it done that time. First and ten, Penn State with two timeouts remaining. Five and a half minutes to go. Neither team moving the ball particularly well. It off again. Justice Hayes, no gain of the play. Remember, if you're just joining us, Derek Green, the Wolverines' leading rusher on the season, out for the year with a broken collarbone. And Davion Smith got the start. There he is on the sidelines. Never a good thing when your number one tailback is wearing a, a sling like that. And your second best runner is your quarterback, who's got a bad ankle and can't run. So now it is completely up to that offensive line. Those guys are responsible. Responsible for trying to grind out a few yards and burn some clock and some field position. Run it again. Great effort by Hayes. Kept those legs moving. And is brought down just across the 35. Got about six. So third and four coming up. Yeah. What do you look to here, Rod? Is well, it a throw? Is no, it a run? I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, as much as that offensive line was being blitzed and they couldn't protect the quarterback, on this drive, they've answered the bell. They have done great run blocking and put them in position. Even if they don't pick this up, they've shortened the game and changed the field positions. I think they'll run it again here. I would. Gardner out of the shotgun. Going to pass. Downfield, incomplete, no flag on the play intended for Funches. Well covered by Trevor Williams, stride for stride. Doesn't matter that guys each have a hand on each other. You may see a little, little hand touching there, a little slapping by both guys. Talk to the officials before the game about that. They said, hey, if a guy isn't doing something to somebody else, if they're both engaged with it, I'm never going to call pass interference. Jesse De La Valley back in his own 23 for Penn State. And he feels it on the fly at the 12. Straight up the middle, got a seam. And a nice return out to the 38 yard line for Jesse De La Valley. But there's a flag down on the play after the 52 yard punt and the 26 yard return. Let's see if that great return stands. During the return, illegal block in the backs, returning team number 36. Ten yard penalty, first down. Those are costly. So at 344 to go, it'll be first down and 10 Penn State. But they'll move it back all the way near the 15 yard line. Well, get your NFL Sunday started on ESPN. 10 a.m. Sunday NFL countdown presented by Snickers. Chris Bernman and the crew getting you up to speed. And then for fantasy football folks, fantasy football now presented by Papa John's at 11 a.m. on ESPN2. I envy you. You'll be home watching all those things <laughs> while I'm on a plane. And it's usually the opposite. <laughs> That's okay. I'm a probably going to get, I may get countdown on my flight home. <laughs> hey, Delta's got TV. I know. That I'm, wireless I'm, ain't bad either on I, America. I think I'll be all right. First down and 10. You know, this this might be the last drive for Penn State. Given that they only have two timeouts and the way that Michigan has has run the ball enough to shorten the game. What is and it, how far they have to go? What does it say about Brady Hoke's belief in his team's defense to play it the way they played it the last time? I, I mean, I think it's good game management. I think he recognized what's, what's going on. Hackenberg has been off. The pressure has been good for the defense. They've shut down Penn State's rushing attack. But this guy has done it before in the fourth quarter. 
four career fourth quarter game winning drives or game tying drives. One of those was last year with less than a minute to go from his own 20 yard line 80 yards with no timeouts. Hackenberg got his team into the end zone to force overtime at the end of regulation. Slings it complete at the 25 yard line to Godwin who held on to it after taking a big hit. A 17 yard gain and a first down. An impressive looking toss by Hackenberg. Well, Madison, Greg Madison, the D coordinator from Michigan, he, he brought four guys on that first down play. And, and he's one of those guys that believes that you have to keep pressure on the good quarterbacks. I don't expect him to go to a three man rush at any point on this drive. I'd be surprised if he does. They run it into the boundary with Bill Belton. And Belton is brought down after a gain of three on the play. Hackenberg, a 6'3 sophomore, native of Virginia. Plenty of time. He's been in this situation before. You want to hurry, but you don't want to rush. You've got two timeouts. When you rush, you panic, you make mistakes. When you hurry, you can still be effective and execute efficiently. Michigan brought an extra guy right at the snap. And Hackenberg a little bit discombobulated. Jake Ryan with the pressure on him. And it's third down and a flag coming. Could be grounding. Well, they were consulting to see whether that ball got beyond the line of scrimmage. And he's arguing that it was and that he also had a guy in the area, but the officials disagree. Potential grounding, offense number 14. Loss of down. Out of the foul, third down. Yeah, but but how about bringing four to to have pressure? There's no receiver in the area at all, and Gardner was all on. He was calling for that flag. <laughs> He's a guy that addressed his team in the wake of that loss against Rutgers in the locker room. And has been a bigger and more vocal leader since. Loss of 12 on the play, third and 19. They're going to spot it at the two. The Michigan defense responding. Hey, this is Greg Madison. He's not going to bring three and play prevent. He's going to seal the deal. He's going to bring four, and he's going to have a couple of safety blitz guys hanging around, too. He wants pressure. They can't block him. That's how you end drives as opposed to a three man rush. That's the sixth sack of the night for Michigan's defense. And Gula punting in the shadows of his own goalpost right now. Almost on that back. Penn line. State. Their second. The Nittany wow. Lions burn a timeout wow. here. Wow, that's not good. Welcome back, everyone, to the big house. Michigan Stadium, Penn State punting on fourth and extra long. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and as they blast Atomic Dog over the loudspeakers, Northfleet ready for this punt. And they get a safety out of it. Well, that's Penn State thinking. What we were thinking, we talked right. about earlier. Once you burn that timeout, you got you got no chance of getting the ball back. Yeah. He just gonna let that go. They want to have a chance to maybe try an onside kick. Right. That was planned. Yeah, that was planned. I mean, what, once they blew that that timeout with 1:43 left and one timeout, punting the ball, they weren't gonna get it back. So at that point, what can you do in desperation? Take the safety, and now you have the shot of maybe you can try an onside kick. And recovered, have one timeout, and take a shot at something. 
All right, guys, 141 to go, and Penn State will kick it from their own 20. I don't think Trill Hill likes the state of Mississippi. No. Two tough weeks there so far for him. And the options very slim and not very good no. for Penn State here. No choice. They have to do an onside kick. They kick it off. They won't get the ball back. And Brady Time Hope. Michigan. And Michigan just called a timeout. Their to first. make sure they got their good hands guys up front. With 141 to go. Don't forget coming up next the surprise team of the year the former head coach here at Michigan Rich Rodriguez now in the desert in Tucson Arizona his Wildcats a perfect 5 and 0 on the season hosting USC. A lot of folks in these parts saying that Rich Rodriguez did not get a fair enough shot at Michigan only three seasons here before he was fired and a team that was getting better each year as you see that three and nine all the way to seven and six and yeah. then they got rid of him because he didn't fit wasn't a Michigan guy. And not now, sure what that means. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all as, about wins at the end of the day yeah, as one fan said to me eleven and two that first year he said hey those were Rich Rod's guys. Yeah. But a win tonight would be huge for Brady Hope because a loss man oof. talk about the heat being yeah. turned up. Well I'll tell you what the boycott didn't stand because over one hundred and thirteen thousand showed up at this game tonight there's the onside kick touch bubbled loose Michigan touched it first but Penn State seems to have recovered it. The Nittany Lions got it back miraculously at the thirty three yard line they've got one timeout remaining. But there's a flag down. Did it go the requisite distance? Offside. It was touched. Once it's kick touched, it doesn't matter. 30. Five yard penalty. Re kick. But they're saying it's offside against Penn State. That's unfortunate for Penn State because that ball was touched. Let's see. Let's see where the offside occurs. Looks like it was up there. Wow, that's close. That's, a, that's really a tough call. That was really close. Let's see what they do. Please reset the clock. One, three, nine. We're going to burn a couple of seconds off the clock. One more look. Let's see. There's the moment of impact with the kick. Well, maybe, maybe himself, but wow. that's, that's close. Ooh. That's three, three, nine. That's a great view right down the line. Yeah, he's probably looking at the body part of the guy that we circled and that was actually Jesse James yeah. 18 who might have One, gotten across three, the line not with nine. his feet but with his body mm. his Ball upper body touched. before the kick. We need two seconds off the clock please. Because the uh, timekeeper didn't cure the Thank first you. announcement there we go it's down to 139. We're going to do it all again a scary moment for the Wolverines. What are the odds that Penn State could get another one recovered? We're about to find out. Yeah. Couldn't have executed it any better. Try the other side this time. Nope. They go the same way. Got a good bounce. But this time fielded cleanly by Michigan. And Gardner limps back onto the field after Blake Countless recovers it. Now keep in mind Penn State used a couple of timeouts questionable situations early in the fourth quarter which put them in this position where they don't have enough timeouts they didn't have enough timeouts to simply kick the ball away and play defense and get the ball back. Devin Gardner back in at quarterback. He missed two series after suffering that leg injury You still see him limping from it. But he's made the key plays when he's had to. Limps back and hands it off to Davion Smith. He barely <laughs> got there with that handoff. He, he can't run three yards. Yeah. He, he hobbled to make that handoff. You know if I'm him I'm looking to the sideline saying don't call that. Let me turn around and hand off. I can't move over there. I mentioned he broke his foot against Ohio State last year but stayed in the game and threw for four hundred and fifty one yards. So that is a testament to his toughness. 
And it was interesting last week in the wake of that loss at Rutgers as he fielded questions some of them he didn't quite like about how he felt about his head coach's job security. He simply said next question mm -hmm. next question reaffirming his belief in a sense in his coaches and especially his head coach Brady Hoke well, keep and his mind, teammates. Yeah and Brady Hoke was not the guy who recruited him out of high school. Yeah, but they they've had a very good relationship after a rocky beginning in which you know Hoke told us hey Gardner a few years ago I was ready to ask him to leave the program. Yeah. Since has come out of his shell. Spoke to the team after that loss at Rutgers. And coach is proud of the way he's matured. Second down and ten. Nice seam off the left side for Davion Smith. And somebody lost a helmet. Yeah, that's Hull. He'll have to come out for a play. Which is bad that's news safe. for the Nittany Lions. He's made the most tackles on defense for that. Well, the really bad play. news for the Penn State fans was the call on the onside kick. Mm. And, and those fans and maybe even that coaching staff will be upset about that call, that offsides, when it appeared they had recovered the ball with enough time to get down the field and a timeout in their back pocket. I got you, I got you. Well, barring a major meltdown here in Michigan. Will end its three game losing streak overall and its four game losing streak to Penn State. And you really can't overstate how important this win is at this time to the staff and to the players. Jessica Mendoza told us earlier that they've invested so much. They haven't had a bad practice since the start of the season, and they feel they are entitled to some success here in the form of vic a victory. Third and three. And Smith gets the first down. And that might do it. Well, Michigan circled the wagons tonight. 200 former players showed up. Brady Hoke said he was still talking about a Big Ten championship. Said he wasn't worried about the outside noise. They circled the wagons. And limped around. May not have been pretty. But sometimes it doesn't have to be. Twelve seconds to go. And they're in the victory formation. Near victory drive here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The Wolverines get the W. Winning it 18 to 13. Gardner was 16 of 24 passing. 192 yards and a touchdown. But what we will remember more than anything else about this game was the way he limped back onto the field yep. after being injured got his helmet back from the training staff and proceeded to make the timely and key plays and lead his team to the win Jessica's downstairs standing by with Brady Hope coach I saw you hugging Devin Gardner right there in that moment what were you telling him well we got some other games we got to win this was a great one and our kids you know fought like heck just like the Penn State kids and you know, it's, it's good to get back on the uh, winning side of football. He told us this week this was the most important game, not so much because it was the next one, but because of the environment, how hard these guys work. How big is this win? Well, you know, I feel so good for them. I mean, just look over there because that, that's what it's all about, and that's why you coach. And, you know, our students are awesome. Uh, we got awesome kids, so we're really excited. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. Devin. You got banged up there at the end. What kept you in this game? I'm sorry, I can't hear. You got banged up there at the end. What kept you in this game? I mean, it's not about me, man. We worked so hard. I mean, ain't, I can't, I can't stay out of the game. There's no way, there's no way anybody's gonna keep me out of that game. So, I mean, it's my teammates, man. They love me. They believe in me. So, I had to be out there for them. There's been so much going on around here, around this program. How important was this win for you guys? It was big, man. It's big. We get a chance going to go bye week. I can hurt later. You know, it was big for us. We got a lot going on. And that's a good team we just played with a great quarterback. And, you know, hats off to them. They played well. But our team, we fought, man. We fought to the end. And, and you guys saw it. Well, after you get some time off, are you going to be able to play against Michigan State? Man, I thank God. I can't wait to play against Michigan State. All right. Thanks a lot, Devin. Go Blue.